the one. Uh, welcome to the 2022 Spring Sports Parent Athlete Meeting. Uh, thank you all for coming tonight. At the end, we do want to make sure that you go ahead and sign up so you have verification that you're at this meeting. And we will have a video that we're going to go ahead and present out to those that did not make it tonight uh, so that they can be able to watch it. You being here in presence will not allow you to have to do that, which is a nice thing. Uh, I'm going to do my part to make sure and try to get this going as quick as we possibly can. I continually hear from some that have heard this multiple times. You make it longer and longer every time. And so I'm going to make it an effort to try to really keep it down to about 30 minutes to go ahead and cover my spot. And then what we'll do is, is we'll have individual breakout sessions with each of the spring coaches so they can go over their training rules, their protocols that they have for their program specifically. And then if there's any parents that are establishing or wanting to do kind of a parent committee, if they'd like to meet with me, they can go ahead and we can do that and we can meet, whether it be in the hall or here in the auditorium. We do have breakout sessions in their locations and we'll show those here in just a little bit. To kind of get started, just do some introductions. Um, I want to make sure and kind of introduce our, our staff, Mr. Supes, who is our building's uh, principal. We have uh, Ms. Hope Downs Lewis, she's an assistant principal. We have uh, Mr. Stratka, who is also an assistant principal. Dr. Porter, who is an assistant principal. And then myself, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Thomas Jasmine. I'm the activities director as well as an assistant principal. And very excited to be a part of the activities program. For our spring sports, this kind of details for what we have and our coaches. If our coaches are here, if you would real quick just stand up for those that are new so we can kind of put a face with the name. Um, I know some of them aren't here. They did talk to me, but we do have the sign-up sheet. So for spring golf, Mr. Ligurski uh, has been coaching for quite some time. Uh, you make sure we'll get communication out to you. He is not here tonight. For our spring tennis, we have Mr. Anderson. Um, yeah, you can tell when he stands up. <laughs> there he is. Uh, for our um, outdoor track and field, I believe Mr. Walker is here. I did see his wife, and I know some of our coaches will be here. They will be here for their individual breakout sessions, uh, Mr. Walker. And then for boys soccer, a new head coach, Mr. Alan Winlet. He's there. There he is right there. <laughs> Welcome aboard. And then for our girls soccer, Mr. Pyre. And then we also have, yes, our softball. Oh my gosh. I did not put it on there, but for softball, I do apologize. Miss Ice. Sorry about that. Also, want to make sure and thank our central administration and our uh, HR department for a lot of the support that they give for our activities. Miss uh, Kelly McGovern and also Miss Bolt. Our support staff, please, every chance that you get, make sure that you thank these ladies, um, the activity secretaries, Mrs. Corbellis and Mrs. Kidd, they're right here in the front next to the camera. They do a wonderful job. They take care of a lot of the paperwork and they just kind of keep me in line. And so if there's anybody that you want to make sure and thank, thank them, please. Also want to make sure and thank our athletic trainer. She'll be here tonight. She's going to be helping with some of the paperwork. She'll be in the main hall. She does a wonderful job of working with our athletes and helping them identify who is uh, injured and who is truly hurt and identify those situations so we can get your athlete back to play when needed. Also, our staff, please thank our custodians, our teachers, our paras, our uh, technology department. There's a whole bunch of them up there, even our nutritional services and the opportunities that they provide for our athletes if needed, whenever. Please thank them, they do a wonderful job and they spend countless hours outside of their regular hours to be able to help support you. You'll know, um, I hate saying this, and I'm just gonna say it now just to get it out of the way, our transportation staff has done a wonderful job. And if any of you have noticed, this winter, if that's what we wanna call it, has been not all that bad. However, we've always had the saying, spring sports starts, so does winter. Um, but they're going to do a great job of getting our student athletes to and from the um, events and they do a great job so thank them. Our maintenance staff to get our crew and our facilities ready. Uh, please every chance that you get thank them as well. Uh, we have fences that have to be put up, we've got fields that need to be brushed and then we've got fields that need to be raked and prepared for and they do countless hours just getting things ready and then 
you know, something happens, and oh yeah, we're not gonna do it on Friday, we're now gonna do it on a Tuesday. And so those activities, crew maintenance, please thank them. I think this next one here, these last three, parents, coaches, wives, and husbands, um, if you ever happen to see them out in the community, please just thank you for what you do and thank them. It's really a collaborative effort to, to build the success and the value of athletics in our programs and the, what it teaches them. So whenever you get you know, a simple thank you, these people spend countless hours taking care of your son or daughter and you know, there's nothing more meaningful to them, I know they'd say it, than a simple thank you. So please, take advantage of that. So every chance you get, What's new? I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this one, COVID, we don't have any restrictions. However, we do need to be mindful. Um, you know, I'm hearing that I think that there's gonna be some releases even through the state level that are gonna be there. So that's gonna be a nice thing that we're gonna be in a spot where we can really kind of go about to being normal if there is such a thing. Virtual students who participate in activities, they're required to check in with their teachers. So we do have students that are there. There is an attendance requirement that you have to check in. Okay, so if that's something new, we have virtual students. If you are virtual, um, you are exempt from like a homeschool agreement that's set up, but you do need to make sure that you are continually checking in. If not, then your eligibility could become a factor. And then credit recovery, we do have a process for that for our spring semester. We look at the previous semester to be able to identify those credits. They do have a window of time to be able to earn those credits for them. And it's not too much of an application situation here. Uh, from the previous semester, however, for the quarter, it does become an opportunity, and we do have a small window for those. We set up a contract, and within that contract, those athletes need to be prepared before they're eligible to compete after that time. Our philosophy, the biggest part of our philosophy is just multi-sport participation and the value that's extended through that. Please, I can't encourage you enough, get your son and daughter involved not only in a spring sport, but then a fall sport and multiple sports throughout. Our activities, it's such a valuable lesson for them. The accountability for it from an eligibility standpoint is so important, so it really does help teach the social, academic, and athletic growth through multiple sport participation. Get them involved. Uh, it's a wonderful experience for them, and I know that they'll have a lot of memories with it, and we want to give as many of those as possible. You'll notice also some of the goals and the character traits that are established with this, discipline, work ethic. We talk about perseverance, responsibility, accountability, integrity. You know, there are situations that are taught on a field or on a court or something like that that really does help our student athletes grow to become productive members of society that you oftentimes don't get in another setting. And we want them to be able to have that opportunity. So great values that are involved within the philosophy and goals of athletics. Remember, it's an extension of the educational setting. It is a privilege, it is not a right, okay? And we wanna make sure that we take advantage of that opportunity. The next thing that I wanna talk about is a little bit about strength and conditioning. I really feel, I, I kinda of coined this phrase, it's the biggest secret that everybody knows about. Please, I encourage you, and it doesn't matter what the sport is, but get your son or daughter involved in strength and conditioning. Uh, largely from an injury prevention standpoint. When it gets later into the season, and we really wanna be able to perform well, it's how well we've strength trained and conditioned, and that's not just during the season, that's off season. Uh, the next best place for them outside of being involved in another sport should be in that weight room. So please encourage them, make them do that. Um, you know, sometimes they can be squirrely, and they got a lot of energy. Have them take it out in the weight room, and instead of, <laughs> in your bedroom or something like that. So a um, lot of strength in this that we talk about, but one thing that I wanna really express here is, is understand the component. When you get to your 18, 19 year olds, that's when you're really starting to train to win. The rest of it's a phase, it's a development. And we need to be mindful of that as we go through this program or your programs, that it's about them training and learning how to compete. And sometimes we get to that win at all cost mentality that's not what high school athletics are really about. So coming together with a common vision for our coaches, we just wanna be that support piece for them to be a respect and encourage that multi-sport perspective. Get them involved in as many things as we can, but yet be fully committed to their current sport. For our parents, just be a support, be encouragement, and be that communication piece to them to help them work through adversity 
and be a support to them as much as they can. We'll have adverse circumstances, and as parents, we want you to be a support for that. And then for administration and our staff, we really want to be that, that connecting piece that brings it all together that helps with a lot of the processes and policies and paperwork and procedures to make it a good experience. So it's a real collaborative effort that we want towards a common vision, which is that multi-sport growth development model. So again, in summary, I just kind of basically talked about this. I think it's important. Let our students to develop great character traits and our coaches to coach and our parents to be parents. It's a great growth experience for them. We want them to be able to participate and enjoy that, let them experience that through themselves. You know, I sometimes hear about how some parents are living through their kids. Let's try not to do that, let's be there for our kids. Programs have risks. Obviously, all students and parents need to know that there's a risk of injury that's involved with spring sports and activities. Um, just be aware of those. But one thing that I think is important is we always want to make sure that we keep our athletes safe. Please make sure that your athletes talk with our trainer. Okay, she's a certified trainer. She knows what she's doing. She does a wonderful job of being able to help communicate to your athlete what they need to do for rehab and whether they're able to play or not. I think it's very, very important. If for, in for instance, your son or daughter gets an injury at an away game, please make sure that the coach knows that they need to make sure that they talk to the trainer so that we can get that pro process going. More than welcome to go ahead and see the doctor. We encourage that as well, but we've got to have that communication with our trainer because we do have, in certain circumstances, a return to play protocol that we have to follow. And without that communication from our trainer, that can delay the process. So please make sure you communicate with our trainer. Also, uh, just, you know, if an injury occurs, uh, we want to make sure that we communicate with you as best as possible at that time when you happen to be there during a game or something. Allow our trainer to be able to assess that situation, and then she will immediately come to you and say, okay, here's the circumstance. Here's what we've got. This is what I recommend. Just don't jump in right away and say, oh, my gosh, what's going on? I need to know. Allow our trainer to be able to take care of this. Concussion management, uh, this is kind of obviously it's set up as a state statute. Any athlete that's exhibiting any kind of signs, we're going to err on the caution side of things, and we're going to make sure that we pull them away from that until they get fully assessed. Okay, once when they're self assessed by a healthcare professional, then at that point, once when they're released from them, can our trainer go ahead and do a return to play protocol. But we will always err on the side of safety, and we'll go ahead and have them evaluated. Uh, that's part of the reason why we do an impact testing, and I'll kind of detail that here in just a little bit, so that we can make sure that we know where they're at, and then we can get them to return to play. And it is a six day, typically, return to play protocol, and there's a process that's for that, so once when the doctor has fully released your student to go ahead and start to participate, then as a district, we'll start our return to play to make sure that they handle the rigors of that particular sport. The doctors it's gonna release from a cognitive standpoint, not necessarily from a physical standpoint, and we wanna make sure that that process is done effectively. It might be one day where they're gonna go ahead and lightly ride the bike, and then they'll slowly, gradually put them into actual game or practice type situations through that protocol. It's the safety of the student athlete. What we wanna detail is, it's more important that we're able to keep them throughout the entire season than just all of a sudden jumping back in right away and now they've got another injury and now they're out for the rest of the season. So that's why I wanna make sure that we have a good return to protocol. You'll notice here, impact testing will be given to pole vaulters, soccer and softball athletes, okay? And that process will be set up with our trainer. I believe soccer's already pretty much taken care of. I think pole vaulters are taken care of and softball's working through those, getting those taken care of so that they're ready to go. And then we have a baseline where we can go ahead and evaluate them based on their concussion. Get your physical. If you had not, and if you have not gotten your physical yet, you have to have a physical before you can practice. Please get with any of our um, local healthcare providers and just contact them, ask them if you can get a physical. There is a form on the Wyoming High School Activities Association page where you can get that. You can fill out your portion, hand that to the doctor when you get your physical, and then that can go ahead and get filled out. They can sign off on it and bring the physical back to our trainer, and then she has it on file. You cannot practice or participate until you have a physical, so make sure that you get that taken care of first, okay?
You'll notice that once when you have your physical taken care of and you want to hand it to our uh, trainer, our trainer is available during Tiger time on March 2nd, March 7th, and March 8th. So those are your times to go ahead and get all of your paperwork submitted, hand it in, so that you can get your orange card. Then you can give it to your coach to be ready to start your first practice. Activity handbook highlights practice day attendance. Uh, because we're on a block schedule, it used to be a situation where we would be in half of your class to be eligible to practice. Now you have to be in all of your classes to be able to practice. If, for instance, you are unable to make it to your first period class, and then you make it to your other classes within the block, you can still go to practice, but you cannot practice. And I encourage that that become the case. We want you to be at practice. You can still understand the skills, the techniques. You just can't perform them. But make sure you're in all of your classes. We have had some students that showed up late. That is considered an unverified absence and you will not be able to practice. And it's very, very important that you're in all of your practices so your coaches can effectively evaluate you for your week's performance. If you weren't there Monday and then you were there Tuesday and then you weren't there Wednesday, unfortunately you may not be able to have that opportunity that you want to on that Friday. So you have to be in all of your practices or all of your classes to be able to practice. There are exceptions if it's a faculty excused, if you're like school sponsored, or if there happens to be a, a doctor's excuse, um, we can go ahead and do those. You'll notice down here though, attendance on game days and early release, you have to be in all of your classes the day of a competition. If leaving before classes start, for instance, or um, leaving before your classes start, you have to make sure you're in all of your classes the day before. So if you're leaving Friday morning, well, that's not a great example because we went to school on Friday morning. But if you have to leave Thursday morning before school starts, you have to be in all of your classes on Wednesday. If there's a situation where you have a doctor's appointment, you'll notice down here, you must have at least 24 hours notice to give to me of that situation. So if all of a sudden you have a doctor's appointment, it happens to be on the day that you're tra transporting or going to your event, please let me know in advance. I know a lot of those doctor's appointments are are uh, set up, but don't try to just get one all of a sudden really quick because that makes it very, very hard for us to be able to prepare for that, okay? Also, you'll notice here, transportation to the event is required by Sweetwater County School District number one. We've had some students that say, hey, can I go ahead and have my mom take me to the event? Outside of an extenuating circumstance, that will not happen. You're required to ride the bus if there happens to be We've had situations where, say for instance, the student is gonna take an ACT test up at the place where your event is, and they've been registered because they may have missed the one that was here, we can allow for that. Or we've actually had some circumstances where a student athlete is gonna see their doctor who happens to be in Jackson at that time, and that's their appointment. We can allow for those things. But outside of extenuating circumstances, students need to ride the bus to their event. Um, you must get pre-approval and you must check out and check back in. So here's kind of the process to help you. If you've got a, a student that has a dentist appointment and it's gonna be during practice or during school day and it's at 11 o'clock, student athlete will go to their classes until they need to leave to go to their appointment. At that point, they'll go ahead and check out. They'll go ahead and leave with their parents or they ride to their doctor's appointment. As soon as they're done with their doctor's appointment, they need to make sure they get a note. They get the note, they bring the note back to school immediately following, and then at that point they check back in, they go to the rest of their classes, and they would be good to go ahead and go to practice that day, or if it happened to be a day that we leave for our competition, they would be good to go. I've had to unfortunately deny a student athlete going to an event because mom went ahead and took them to lunch after the appointment, and then they went ahead and fed the dogs, and next thing you know, they're just showing up at their very, very last class. So make sure that you keep that very, very tight window. You go directly to your appointments, come back, then you're good to go. Highlights continued, just talking a little bit about overnight trips. Um, any overnight trip is subject to bag checks, okay? So please, we're not trying to catch you, but we just wanna make sure that our student athletes are safe on their trip. We've actually had some circumstances where we've done a bag check, and then they go to a particular room, and there might be something there that's in question, we wanna make sure that that's not a concern. 
And more importantly, again, we want to make sure the student athletes are safe. Any and all practices involving Rite Springs High School athletics will not last any longer than three hours unless they're approved by me. We should have focused practices. They need to be quality practices. Anything over three hours is just too extreme, okay? And we want to make sure that that's implemented effectively. There are some circumstances, I can tell you right now, for golf, sometimes to do 18 holes, it might take a little more than three hours. We're going to allow that situation from a practice standpoint. Okay, but that has to be approved by me. Students have online classes or college level courses will be required to show previous semester grades and weekly eligibility. This is very, very important to understand. It's a, it's a process that we have. So any of you that have college classes, you have to send a weekly report of those. Okay, and we will check your previous semester eligibility. You'll notice here contact information most during the spring is pretty well taken care of, but we have to have your release to travel, okay? You get on United Cl or Unified Classroom, you go into returning students, or if it's a new student for a freshman, you go ahead and you get in there and you go through the process. It's basically contact information that you have to go through. Get all of that taken care of. There is one little thing that says, I allow my son or daughter to go ahead and travel on the trip. So yes on that. Now your son or daughter is allowed to go ahead and travel. Please make sure that that's taken care of. Our secretaries will be checking those once we get the rosters. Get that taken care of now. There's a process right down here. And again, most of you should have that already taken care of and set up and ready to go. Points of emphasis from the Wyoming High School Activities Association. You're only allowed eight semesters. Okay, so basically with your freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year, Total goes up, that's your eight. You don't have the situation where I'm not gonna go out my freshman year, and then what I'm gonna do is become a super senior, and then kick butt my super senior year. It's not an option, you just get those eight semesters. Must be an amateur athlete, so if you have any kind of semi-pro or pro um, status, we need to know immediately, and I would venture to guess that if that is the case, we're gonna know. Um, Cannot compete on an independent team. This is something that's really interesting, especially for spring sports. We have clubs that are associated with the particular sport. You have to be strictly involved with Rock Springs High School activities. If you're also, as an example, let's just say you're in a soccer club and you're in the soccer program here, that becomes an independent team and it would violate that. And that would make you ineligible, okay, for you to be able to participate. So make sure you're not a part of an independent team. Obviously, recruitment is not allowed. This is largely associated with schools that have, or with districts that have multiple schools in them. For instance, you know, like Casper, you've got Kelly Walsh, and you've got Casper and Natrona. You wanna make sure that there's no recruiting. And then um, any new student that's competed in Wyoming or nationwide last year, you need to come and see me. We have eligibility requirements that we need to check for that to make sure that you are still eligible or not eligible. If, for instance, you participated in varsity and we need to make sure that it becomes a clean move for this year, then if that is the case, then you're able to not participate. We have to check that status. So please make sure you communicate with me. And then obviously the last one, no participation in college or university teams. Here's our participation requirements for uh, paperwork in regard to insurance. Please make sure that you communicate with our uh, secretaries or myself, if you do not have insurance, you have to be insured, okay? The uh, Wyoming High School Activity Association does have a program to set up with catastrophic injury or with just a limited insurance that we can get you taken care of for a small fee. We have to make sure that that's taken care of. So if you do not have insurance, make sure you let one of us know. Any homeschooled student, if you're being homeschooled, we have to make sure that we have the proper uh, combination school agreement and paperwork that's set up with that to make you eligible. And that has to be done before you can practice. Okay, please make sure. I think there's a little bit of miscommunication out there. I want to find a practice for homeschool students. That is not the case. You have to have all of your paperwork taken care of. Then you can go ahead and start practicing. Okay, so please come see me or one of our secretaries for that. Virtual school students, again, you're exempt from a homeschool agreement because you're part of the district just as in a different avenue. Um, age, you cannot be 20 before August 1st, and then you must pass three credits to be eligible for the previous or current semester. 
Uh, policy on student code of conduct, obviously it will hold to a higher standard. Again, it's a privilege. It's not a right, so your conduct and your behavior is to be exemplary, is to be above and beyond. So you'll notice that there are conduct consequences that can happen. Um, it can detail anything from being inappropriate at a school venue, um, like an assembly, or in a classroom, or something like that. There could be probation, suspension, dismissal, or other actions that are reasonably fitting for the um, circumstance. So understand, we do have a school code of conduct. Along with that, it involves an alcohol, tobacco, and drug policy that we have put in place. If you are found in violation of those, you will serve a suspension. You'll notice your first violation is a 60 activity day suspension. Okay, you can still practice, all right? And you can attend or you cannot attend or perform at any competition. Okay, so if you happen to violate this, you're out for 60 days, can I still go on the trip? No, you cannot. Can you still practice? Yes. If it's a second offense, it'll go to a full calendar year and you cannot practice or attend any of the events. And then third time it's a violation, then you're done with athletics for the remainder of your high school career. Please note, this is in bold, notice that electronic media constitutes evidence of alcohol, tobacco, or drugs. Unfortunately, as much as I hate to say it, we've had situations where we have had a student at a party in the background, not even on their possession, happened to be very clearly open bottle of alcohol, and it just violated this alcohol and drug policy. Or there happens to be any of that stuff that's there. So please, be mindful of where you're at. Understand your circumstances, and unfortunately, <clears throat> we all have one of these called a phone, but it's not a phone. It's not what that's used for anymore. It's for videos and for pictures and everything else. So take care of yourself and make smart choices there. We do have a mitigation process of the penalties. Okay, if a student chooses to go ahead and do a student assistance program, they can. You'll notice if a student agrees to participate, what we'll do is for a first violation, it goes from 60 activity days down to 10 activity days suspension or 20% of the total contest. You wanna be very mindful of this because if you choose the 10 activity days, then all of a sudden now you have to get the number of practice requirements that are needed for your sport again, and it's gonna make it a lot longer. So it could be up to 20 days, actually it'd be 19. Okay, and that's practices. So you wanna make sure that you understand that. You'll, you'll do 20% will be of the total contest. So for soccer, it's gonna be a little different than it is for softball. And for track, it's gonna be a little different because of the number of competitions that you have there. Okay, uh, you'll also do a research assignment of that violation. If it's a second violation, then it reduces it from that one calendar year down to 60 activity days. There is no um, paperwork or research that happens in that situation. What you'll do, Liz, is you'll just serve just much like it's your first offense without mitigation. Third offense then goes down to a calendar year, much like it is before. <coughs> can't practice, you're just done, and then if it happens a fourth time, then you obviously already know you don't get to mitigate. Uh, social media, uh, you know, I understand that a lot of times in circumstances with athletics and activities, it's a high profile environment. There's a lot of stress, there's a lot of circumstances that come up with it. And, oh my gosh, I can't believe we lost by one at the last 10 seconds. Oh, it should have been this, and we should have done that, and you start posting things on social media it can play a factor into it. We do have a process in our activity handbook that if it does become negatively affecting sports or program, student athletes can have consequences for those. So please, pause before you post, all right? Just be mindful and understand the value of athletics and how the strength can be gained in that loss, how it can make us much better and grow from it instead of just wanting to post with it. I always keep this article, it's starting to get a little bit dated, but it really does hit home. It's an actual article in an athletic administration where it talks about how a coach was highly, at, this, at the secondary level, or I should say post-secondary level, is interested in recruiting a particular student athlete, and they do their work now. They check their Twitter account, they check their Instagram account, they try to get on Snapchat, they try to find out their TikTok, they wanna know as much as they can about their son and daughter, and they wanna know about what kind of parents they have. In this particular article right here, they found on the Twitter account, they looked through it, that that's not what they felt would be a good representation of their program. 
And so they did not highly recruit that athlete at that level. Um, and if I remember deeply within this conversation, this was something that was ended up hosting his sophomore year. So, oh, I'm a sophomore, I can get away with it. No. Be mindful of what you post. Real quick on that, I think this is really important. I like this piece right here. Life is 10% of what happens to us and 90% is how you react to it. So be mindful of that. Weekly eligibility, I'll kind of go through this. Most of them should have a pretty good understanding behind this. We talk about eligibility, checked out at the school. Every Monday or the first day of the week, I will go ahead and pull eligibility. I'll pull the report, we'll identify student has to be passing at least 3.0 credits that week. If they're passing that many, they're eligible for that week. If not, then what we'll do is, is we'll flag those student athletes, we'll put a yellow, meaning they're in danger of failing, that means they're still eligible, but we expect the coach to have a conversation with them. Hey, what are you doing? What do we need to do to get your grades up here so you're not eligible next week? If they're marked in red, that means they're ineligible for the week. And what they will have is they will have until noon of the following day to try to get that work caught up, okay? And if they do and I get information from the coach or from the teacher, either an email or a note that that's been upgraded and it needs to detail what the grade is, then we can go ahead and change their status. Anything after noon on that time, then unfortunately that student is late. They're ineligible for the week, okay? Purpose for that is, is that we want to make sure that we have a high accountability to hold those students accountable for their grades, and we want to do that right away during the week. It also helps our coaches, as well as our athletes, prepare for who they need to prepare for during the week. It would not be beneficial for us to say, well, let's wait until Thursday. Then all of a sudden on Thursday, we find out that, oh, Johnny's not able to go ahead and participate. Unfortunately, he's got the majority of the reps for the week. Now we're trying to prepare somebody that's not going to be fully prepared. So that's part of the reason why we do it that way. We want to make sure that we give them plenty of time. Students taking college classes will have to verify their college grades weekly. What I do in this situation is, is I go ahead on a parent square. Please get access to parent square. I will find out those students that have those college classes. And every week, I will send out the same message. You need to submit to me your grades. And what they'll need to do is, is they'll need to make sure that it has the court's name, their name, their grade, in that class, okay? They have to have those three things that I can bear for. And also it needs to be time stamped. Yes, we had students that try to milk the system and they just try to keep sending out each week's grades from what they had their very first week. Screenshot, that's gonna be your best bet. It has this course name, it has your name, it has the grade, and it's screenshotted, I can tell. Oh, he screenshotted that at 11 o'clock last night. Did this, that's good, we're good to go, okay? So make sure you do that. Um, only when makeup work has been handed in prior to eligibility to check with teacher to verify students' efforts. Please understand this. I think this is a good summary of it. A lack of effort on your part does not require extra work on our teachers. So if I come to you on Monday, I pull you in and I say, hey, your student right now is ineligible. So Kevin, you're ineligible for this week. Um, you got until tomorrow at noon. And then all of a sudden he goes to his teacher and says, hey, here's six of my assignments. I need these done by tomorrow at noon so I can play. That teacher may say, uh, <laughs> I've got all these that I need to grade as well. I'll put them in the order. If I get to them in time, I get to them in time. If not, I'm sorry. So please understand, lack of effort on your part doesn't require extra work on our teachers. Start of the season, practice requirements. Boys and girls soccer, outdoor track and field, as well as girls softball. Your first day of practice will be March 7th, okay? Um, you must have at least nine practices before the start of your first competition, and your first competition can be March 17th. We'll end up going for softball. They end up going to uh, um, Cheyenne, and it starts on the 18th. For boys and girls spring golf, first practice is March 28th. Their first competition can be on the 30th of March, and then uh, the meet schedule will be set up. Oftentimes for golf, they just really look and see what kind of facilities are available and then they end up hopping in and out with areas to go, okay? And then finally, or with girls um, and boys spring tennis, March 28th, their first competition is April 2nd. Each day will count as one comp or practice, okay? So if you're doing two-a-days, okay, well, that means we can only do like basically four days, we can have our nine practices. 
No, that's not the case. Each day counts as a practice, so if you're having two a days, it still counts as one towards your nine. Our fundraising policy, I think a lot of people are understanding of this. The big thing is, is that anything that's referenced our school, make sure that it has to be pre-approved and we have to make sure that it's not conflicting with another fundraiser. So, you know, if somebody's doing a bake sale and then another program wants to do another bake sale at that time, that's gonna compete against each other. We don't want that, okay? You'll notice here, multiple group activities may not have the same fundraiser. Uh, each program is only allowed three, okay? Um, and that's all that they're set up there. Any non-school group requiring the collection of money will be encouraged to keep the money separate, okay? We do accept donations. Anything under $1,000 has to be approved by our building principal. There are criteria of the gift fund that we have to check with. Anything over $1,000 has to be approved by the superintendent, okay? Again, any of those that have accounts or setups, we need to make sure that those get pre-approved and please try not to have any of our names that are associated with it. Technically, that becomes our account. Conflict resolution, uh, just a really simple process for it. We understand we want these student athletes to learn how to advocate for themselves, but at the same standpoint, we wanna make sure that there's a good effective process for them to be able to work through it. If there's any concerns, please communicate with your coach. Athlete, if you have something that needs clarification, Communication is the key in this situation. Don't just assume something and coaches also make sure that you effectively communicate to your athletes so they know where they stand. If there's something that needs clarification, that's the first change. Coach and athlete, talk, work it out. Next one would be athlete, coach, and activities director. We can work through that. If that's still not the circumstance, then we go with the parent that gets involved. These two can be interchangeable meaning that if we need to and the parent needs to get involved sooner, we can do that, that's not a problem. We have a very open door policy for those, but we wanna make sure that we have that proper chain. If you wanna to get to this, we need to make sure that this has happened first. I'm gonna ask you, have you had a conversation with the coach first, okay? And if that's been the case, then I can go ahead and get clarity for it and we can follow up. Then finally, coach, and then the parent and activities director, only if needed and oftentimes, we will always have the student athlete there. I know that this is hard to understand at times, but sometimes what the student athlete is saying at home is not exactly what's happening at practice or at the event. And so by having everybody there, we can oftentimes take care of those. Well, you said this at home. Well, that's not what's really happening, that kind of thing. What's very, very important with this, it says never after a sporting event, so if you have any kind of concerns, any frustrations or anything, please, Give yourself the calm period. Calm down never after a sporting event, okay? And it's not gonna be about playing time or coaching philosophy. This is one that we oftentimes hear about, well, my son with this other student is not getting as much, and we're not talking about the other student athlete. If you have a concern for your student, we'll talk about your student just in particular, okay? Sportsmanship, yellow card, um, we want to make sure that we uphold to a high standard. You know, oftentimes you hear about a lot of communities that say, oh yeah, that's that community, they're terrible. We don't want that. We want that representation for us to be uh, positive. We want it to be what a class act. I oftentimes tell um, our coaches, I say, there's nothing better for the sign of a great program than when I get a phone call from a hotel or from a restaurant that says, I have to let you know, your kids are a class act. All of them said thank you. All of them were very, very nice. They even pushed their chairs in. That's the kind of communication we have. I don't like hearing about, oh yeah, it's a complete mess. And they you know, left the towels laying all over the place and they're purposely soaked and everything like that. That's not what we're about. We wanna have good sportsmanship on and off the field. You'll notice there's multiple people in here. Enjoy the ride. Respect, integrity, dedication, encouragement. Starts with us as administrators. We have to hold to a high standard, and that is the expectation. You know, sometimes you hear from them, oh, you're just a fun killer. No, there's just some things you can't do, and we have to make sure that we uphold to those. Our coaches, our coaches are really a role model. Whether they like it or not, they are a role model. They need to uphold to high expectations on how to behave. Our spectators, I get it. You're in a situation where you get to watch. You don't have the stretch of that stress of actually having to coach it. You get to see it and you see it from multiple perspectives and oftentimes you just see it from your son or daughter's perspective 
and it can get elevated. We want to make sure that we see the big picture and always represent ourselves as well as our community well. The participants, you know, we want to make sure that we're in a situation where we're not, you know, making fun of the other team or anything like that. And then obviously our officials, they're going to hold to a high standard by making sure that they uh, keep the game as clean as possible. Our communication, we use Facebook quite a bit. Um, Twitter, I do tweet out just a little bit in regards to sportsmanship. Um, if student athletes have something that they want to share, we can oftentimes share it on um, Twitter. But we use Facebook, ISHS Authentic, mostly for a lot of our communication. And then these are the two biggest ones that we use. Parent Square is absolutely huge. Please, if you're not on Parent Square, get on Parent Square. Uh, that's how we get great communication to our parents about anything and everything. Um, time that they're returning. Like I said, with transportation, bad roads or something like that, you're expecting them to be home at 8, and they may not get home until 10. Our coaches are going to communicate to you on Parent Square. We're just now leaving Rawlings. We'll be home expected around 10 o'clock instead of 8. Okay? So that's very, very important. Dragonfly, um, we're a pilot school uh, for this. The Wyoming High School Activities Association is really trying to implement this as to be the one sole source of uh, activities and athletics regarding anything. Paperwork, working with officials, taking care of schedules. This is going to be, I think, in the long run, it's going to be the one source where we're going to be able to get all of our communication. So make sure you've gained access to Dragonfly. It's, like I said, it's a pilot year. Next year we look at doing a lot more with it and ironing out some of the kinks. But that's the platform that you'll want to get for scheduling and other stuff. Here are your individual breakout sessions. Don't leave yet. I do want to communicate just a couple of things. Golf is in room 406. In each of these areas, there is an iPad. That's going to be your sign up for you to go ahead and sign up into that area. Please make sure you do that. Because if you're not signed up there, we don't have you on that, then unfortunately we're going to have to get you to do the acknowledgement form. Also, please do me a favor and don't fill out for your buddy who is not here, okay? Make sure that, that they're not here, that they end up having to do the acknowledgement form. You'll notice uh, outdoor track is going to stay here in the auditorium. Boys soccer is going to be in the library. Girls soccer is in the cafeteria. Softball will be in room 408. If that room is not big enough, let me know. We'll make sure we get you plenty of room. Spring tennis will be in the mezzanine. Our athletic trainer will be in the uh, main hall. And that's pretty much everything that we have right here. The next thing is, this is our acknowledgement link that we'll have. After we're done with this video, I'll share that with this link. For those that didn't make it, they can go ahead and make sure that they sign up and fill out that form. Okay, it is 644. Doggone it. I didn't